everybody, and welcome back to Higher Density Living. You are joined with me, Alexander McKeg, your host, and our actually one of our favorite recurring guests here on the show, Michael Horn. And just for a little bit of background here, Michael Horn is the authorized representative of FIGU here in the United States, and he is one of the greatest individuals when it comes to espousing, speaking about the prophecies and the Meyer case to talk about the truths, information, and enlightenment that it brings in terms of consciousness, evolution, and the spiritual teaching. Did I miss anything with that, Michael? Hi, uh, Alexander. <laughs> I, I, just a slight co- correction. Actually, I'm not the Figu representative. I represent Billy. Represent in Billy. In the English-speaking world, America, and you know other places where I've been able to go and present, etc. Thank you for correcting me on that. I appreciate mm-hmm. it. Got to get it right, right? It's all about getting the details right. If you don't have it right, then it's wrong. So that's pretty much how black and white it is at the end of the day. Now, I I brought you back on because I wanted to make sure that we took some time to focus on how the internet and skeptics and uh, know-it-alls like to assume, you know, their claims about Meyer, his case, his life, his journey – and the evidence which he has produced, and over how many books has he written? I, it's it's an absolute over sixty books. How He's many written over sixty? Over sixty over books. 60. Yeah. That, yeah. in and of itself, is an achievement for somebody with two arms. And we're talking about <laughs> and, a Swiss farmer. Not a busy farm. schedule. <laughs> not a busy schedule. We're talking about a Swiss farmer with one arm. So, um, just to, I just want to set the tone for that. So what I want to do through this app and I've shared with this, uh, these with you ahead of time is to go through these claims that people have on the internet against Meyer and his case and what he has shared here with humankind. And there are seven of these points. So we'll go through this and we'll, we'll knock them off one by one. And well, let's talk about these. And I'm pretty sure we're going to come to some sort of conclusion on each one. Does that work? Sure. You know, uh, maybe I could just make an introductory statement on that. Absolutely. You can. You don't have bit. to ask. Just talk. Go for it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> of course. Um, by the way, the whole thing with Billy being a farmer is kind of, we laugh about it because, you know, it conjures up an image. Billy is a master, not a jack of all trades, a master of all trades. Yeah. And, and yeah. farming may be one of them, but it's, you know, it's only one. Um just before we jump into this thing with skeptics, I, I will I will say this: the skeptical attacks against Billy Meyer, uh, some of which are simply uh, one-offs here and there, others that are very supported through rather nefarious higher-level intelligence agencies, etc., and picked up by the dummies in ufology, which is the most stupid uh, category. Of it's a religion <laughs> study. It, it, it's a religion. It's a belief, belief system. Therefore, it's the least scientific field of study that is absolutely cluttered with one wannabe dummy after another. And that includes scientists and, and others who have popped up to come forward to be the, the latest experts. I, I think of a guy named Eric Weinstein, a very smart guy, but suddenly he's the instant ad water expert of the day uh, trotted out because Lou Elizondo made a connection with him. And of course, the people that, you know, Lou connects with various uh, idiots in uh, various fields, and then they suddenly become very enthralled with their newfound acceptance by some cult hero. Mm -hmm. And they are, they're used as tools and shills. And Eric Weinstein, maybe to a degree, his also smart brother, Brett, who's I think a little bit dipped into, but none of these people, none of them will respond to the ample outreach, not only by me, but by many other people who have directed them to or provided them with Myers information, links to it, et cetera, et cetera. This is part of when Billy Myers said America will destroy itself. Trust me, it is this moron mentality Mm -hmm. of ufology Mm -hmm. and the imbecile so-called scientists and experts, not a single one of whom has one verifiable piece of evidence of extraterrestrial manufacture, nor do they have one 
single significant fact previously unknown. And that's why those of us involved with the Meyer case who know that Billy is overflowing mm -hmm. with you know independently analyzed evidence and prophetically accurate information, et cetera, can only do like what Billy has said back in 2015. Stick our pockets, uh, stick our pockets in our hands. Stick our hands in our pockets. I've seen it. As we, yeah, right. As we watch the unfoldment of what he is specifically foretold every week, and sometimes more than once a week, we see the fulfillment of the prophecies, now the predictions, in one field, one science, one area after another. And this is the demise and destruction of our idiot corporate country and the masses of brain dead, stupid people who have rushed in the wrong directions and it will be at the cost of their, our security, survival, etc. So why don't we talk about some of the skeptically? Yeah, I hear that. Here. And do you know, it, it's, it's really interesting. You have a very specific vocabulary when describing the current state of affairs. People may, f I, I can already feel you already, like I got to explain this. People may feel that these words are harsh. People may feel that these words are unjust, that they are unloving. That these words that Michael Horn or Billy and supporters of him don't have a true reverence for life. I was wondering <laughs> if you might want to just clarify why you choose to use words that are so um, precise uh, so clarifying, so jarring to some. Why? Why would you choose to use these words? Well, it didn't really come natural to me in certain ways. Now, let's be clear. Billy uh, has often stated that diplomacy is a form of lying, and if we think about it, it's so. We have dipl diplomacy and politics are the art of advantage, not the art of possibilities and harmony and peace, love and freedom. They're always a manipulation as cleverly cloaked as it may be to try to assuage somebody's often righteous or not righteous position about something that opposes their one's own intentions. That's why the people in Washington or wherever can barely say yes or no to something. Mm. They parse, they have to elaborate because they are liars fundamentally. And so many of the people in politics are trained as liars, as lawyers. It's remarkable how many people who go to law school and come out, then go into politics. They, they learn to manipulate the mush-brained masses and Billy has used language that is actually far harsher than what I'm oh, comfortable with. Most, most definitely. Most definitely. <laughs> you know, and we're talking about a man that uh, there have been 25 attempts on his life, kidnapping attempts on his kids, uh, just brutality upon brutality since childhood. And yet, in truth, he's, he's probably the sweetest, most balanced, loving person. But coming to terms with the stupidity of a world that insists, insists on self-destruction, mm -hmm. destruction of others, of course, in the process, on the, the destruction of the sustenance, the world, the nature that we living organisms, human beings, who seemingly should be smarter than ants, yeah. and we're not, they, they, they get it right all the time unless something interrupts it. They build, they, it's, you know, you can say this about most organisms and creatures in nature. They have a nice little program. They know what to do. They don't think about it. It's true. They're instinct based. We have the ability to think and we can't think our way out of a goddamn paper bag open at both ends to see that we are overbreeding, overpopulating, overpolluting, overconsuming on every level, on every level. The city <clears throat> that I live in, is suspended temporarily uh, recycling uh, efforts because they have to outreach down to Phoenix looking for help to, I guess, where to put the recycling stuff. It's because you know, it's too just much. Like, it's too many people it, using too many things, having too many thoughts, which are untruthful, unjust, unbalanced all the time. And then 
they'll have children, they'll raise these children, and they'll be built on the same sort of false perspectives, ideologies, dogmatism, religions, everything of the sort that are truly don't realize are doing more damage to them, right? Their constituents around them and the planet, which fundamentally allows them to live and support. Precisely. <laughs> I mean, there it is. It seems and pretty I'll tell you, straightforward. Here's yeah. the thing. You cannot say this uh, to most people in most walks of life and in media because they are religiously deluded. They somewhere consciously or otherwise picked up, go forth and multiply. They forgot that there's, you know, along with multiplication, yeah. there is subtraction, halting, you know. So you, we are dealing with the least intelligent epoch here where the technology, you can get monkey brains to operate anything. We, we have robots that are taking over things and, sure. and so many people that are preoccupied with their techno toys won't be able to afford the next ones because they're going to be booted out of even flipping burgers. Mm -hmm. And this is pretty, pretty clear AI, which Billy Meyer foretold as an enormous danger to our survival in 87 yeah. is and will prove to be that in his latest contact report, he re reveals that the actual development of AI is much farther along, much more dangerous much, much more threatening to literally to our survival. And all of this is coming to the fore. And, you know, even Elon Musk and a few other people say, yeah, not a good idea. Well, people are stupid and you can be stupid and still know how to do certain things. Mm -hmm. uh, I ran into a stupid astronomer who thought he co-discovered Apophis in you know twenty three years after Billy Meyer announced it, Correct. and he he can only babble in name attacks when confronted with copyright verified proof. Meyer and the player and warned us about this twenty three years before Correct. this clown found it, and then recently the newest thing scientists just discovered nineteen thousand undersea volcanoes. Where did those come from? Yeah, well in nineteen forty seven or forty eight, Swath told Billy hundreds of thousands of undersea volcanoes ringing the planet. And he explains that they're the most active ones and all this stuff that has come to pass since the forties, really. So I was recently on a gotcha UFO uh, interview. I thought a guy approached me from England said, seemed like a nice guy. Oh, we really want to discuss the Billy Meyer case with you. And sure, you know, and uh, we want to send us film. We want to know everything. So and I, come on, we have a little pre interview chat. Oh, we've watched 30 videos with Billy. Bob. And then, you know, I, just, I relax because I figure well, it's nice that <laughs> people who don't appear to be that knowledgeable about anything are wanting to find out. It turned into, and I, I only picked up on it almost, an hour into this thing, I have an hour and a half later. Bummer. Yeah. This was a gotcha thing. This was a setup to try to attack Billy, his evidence, and me. <laughs> and I was really taken aback by it. And so I let it sit for a while after it was out. And then I came back and I simply posted on their channel. And I've posted a few things, but I said, since, you know, all you geniuses are now attacking this, please just tell us. <laughs> I mean, you cannot, you almost can't imagine how stupid the majority of people involved in this ufo uap thing and how self-impressed they are yeah. that they've just discovered lights in this guy so i simply did a laundry list of i said please tell me why all of the following experts are wrong and you're right and i just listed the names of all these things well of course nobody ever does that and my right. encountering and my it just is a quick, hopefully, <laughs> wrap up on this question part here. It was back in about 2001 that I first went to take on the professional skeptics based in L.A. and then others, wherever they were, who were attacking Meyer all over the chaos. That's a hoax and hoax this and hoax that. And uh, James Randi or his organization, people all over the place, none of them, none of them. Michael Shermer. Uh, you know, a skeptic, a former very religious person makes sense. Now he's a religious skeptic. And actually, Andrea took him on, and just demolished him online. These people are stupid. 
they are so prejudicial. They think they know what reality is. And there's a saying that people always like to put forward. This is a beauty. Go for it. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, which is the most stupid thing. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Something extraordinary could have the most simple evidence. Galileo was considered extraordinary. His claims. So it simply means that when you say extraordinary, instead of saying, Let's see what this is. Uh, see, people that identify themselves as skeptics, they've got a, a cosmology. So they're not scientists, first and foremost. Can they do some science? Of course, many of them can. But the thing is, when you say extraordinary, you're already out of the game. No, what you say is, we subject all claims to the scientific method, to standard uh, forensic protocols, to marching through things that are presented to determine the factual truth. It, our perspective that something's weird, strange, extraordinary is irrelevant. Let's dis, let's take it on because if Billy Meyer, he should be so easy to, to just simply go through and show that this is not extraordinary at all. It's a big hoax. So it's either the longest running, most improbable, most impenetrable hoax in modern history, right. or it's the incomparable truth. So, with that, you've got my explosion of the day. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. And, you know, you boil it down, like, why would essentially a nobody, this man, want to go through the trouble, the heartache, the ailments, the threats, the defamation, everything? Why would someone want to do this to themselves? You'd have, even if you were clinically insane, you wouldn't have the rigor, the structure, the fortitude to continue to do this for so long with such a level of consistency with one fucking arm. Simple as that. It really that's what it boils it's what it boils down to. I that in and of itself is remarkable. And I think when people say, Oh, like all these other things, it's gotta be a hoax, it's like no wonder <laughs> Goebel in the late 30s and 40s, was so good with propaganda. Because if you, people are so quick to adopt a lie and an untruth rather than to take five extra minutes to really think about something logically and be like, that is true and that is untrue. And that's why propaganda and lies and the whole idea of the mush brain and making and essentially thinking for others has become so powerful, you know, in many different regime changes and cultures over time to the detriment of human evolution. So, that, yeah, yeah. You, you know, yes, yes, yes. And, and there's one other thing, you know, I'm, because people will take what you started off with about the one arm man. Let's be honest. There are many people who have done remarkable things in life sure. with one arm or no arms or quadruply. But here's the thing, just to put it into the contemporary perspective. How did a man in the 1940s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, with no technology, mm-hmm. and let's be specific, not even a telescope in the 19, let's say 80s, when he starts probably 70s, where he could probably, where he could obtain factually accurate information about every planet no. in the solar system. I know. How could he do that? So, and I, I, I try to point out to people when they're ready for it, this body, this chunk of the information in the Meyer case proves beyond a reasonable doubt, to a scientific and legal standard, the existence of space and time traveling extraterrestrial life. While the tinker toy brains want to know how to get this technology and that technology, Mm -hmm. here's Mm -hmm. Billy Meyer, who's participated in those travels and been an eyewitness and described. I mean, (laughs) it's so simple. It's so easy. Ten minutes in this material, if, if people go through the, the Mars and black holes and those, and then they see this is copyright verified, a truly intelligent person, 10, 12 years old, even, some, even somebody like Avi Loeb could figure this out. Absolutely. 
it, it might be a stretch for him to, to to think of something other than pimping a book out on stuff he knows nothing about. And That's he's a nice enough. guy. I had a very brief once on yep. the phone. I'd be very glad to have a civil conversation with him or to have a debate if he would be up to it, but he would go Robin Hansen on me. Robin Hansen being the scientist who, after 20 minutes of regaling us with his UFO expertise, and I put, bring up Meyer's evidence, suddenly he's literally scratching and crawling all over, and Avi Loeb would be scratching and crawling too, unless he went to that part of himself that I know he has just from listening to, where the integrity is still there and the uh, the, the mercenary profit self promotional thing could be put to rest for a while and he could do something of tremendous value to humankind far beyond selling stupid books on space rocks. I'll share. And I'll share this. You know, there's another. Him. Yeah. Pardon me. I'll share what you I'm just sorry? said with him and I'll, and I'll be like, Hey, please do. Would you want to yes. come on and talk about this? Yes. Does he have, is he an, a human being who, who doesn't mind being held accountable for what he doesn't know that he claims to want to know that if he knew he could help other people to know that we get suppressed in that attempt and he might be able to help humankind actually long after his books and the rest of them have been relegated to the garbage heap. There's a couple other people I think of. There's a guy named Lex Fridman. I don't know if you know him. I know exactly he's who he is. He's a bright fellow, you know. Mm -hmm. Be stupid um, because he cannot allow himself to respond to not only my, but other people's outreach who've poured into him. Myers information. See, he has to interview the credentialed non-thinker of the day who's going, well, you know, uh, thank you very much. It all boils down to nothing. Yep. Whoever he has on knows nothing. There's a, a woman, uh, I forget her name. I, it's good that I forget her name for now. That's fine. She's a religious professor who talks about UFOs as well. Joe Rogan, He's we had the book, was put in his hands to show him 617 of Myers photos. Poor dummy, too much pot, choked out too many times. Photoshop, 1975 Photoshop, right? 64, but this guy had Photoshop. Huh? No Joe. chance. So these are the people. This is the bad joke of our civilization where, of course, we worship celebrity and we worship money and bling and all this stuff. We don't worship our own survival. No. Turn over our power to these outside forces to a person too arrogant and stupid, stupid, stupid to deal with the truth. And go ahead, take it on. I'd be glad to have some one of these brains. Dear Lex, here I am again saying, show me how smart you are and how you account for this. How did Billy Meyer do that? Copyright verified then when all of your brilliant scientists, friends, and yourself can't figure out how to tie your shoes on this? Aha, uh -huh. great. Yeah, Thank I, you very much. Isn't it? it in People trip up so much on this material. They almost don't know how to approach it because it's so open. It's so honest. It's so precise. And say you get rid of the UFOs for a second. And I promise our audience right now listening that we'll delve into the seven top things that people say against the case. Yes. But say, for instance, you push the technology stuff aside. Say, for instance, you push away the idea about the UFOs. Say, for instance, you take away the great journey, all of that stuff, everything about the man, the whole idea of, you know, him and saying, you know, people say it's a cult, whatever. Push all that away. If you take the laws and recommendations, which were written, brought down from the Patale level, right? Arahat Athersada the one who watches time. And you take it for a moment and you go out with no other inputs, nothing, and you observe the world around you and you observe yourself, you will find out that in every single case, no matter how large and no matter how small, they are completely governed by these specific things. And not one of those 10 things or whatever it might be actually in any way, shape, or form is dogmatic ideological, religious, it never trumps on your free will, nothing of the sort. And that should be the most powerful thing that people look at if they just took the time to recognize it, but they're so 
caught up on everything else to just, you know, put the worst mark or stain on this man's life and everything else that he has produced to support, which is really not the idea that, you know, extraterrestrials exist that look like us, but that there are ways to live which allow you to exist. And if you align with them, you will find a more peaceful, loving, truthful life for yourself. It's as simple as that at the end of the day. 100%. The law of cause and effect, Mm -hmm. the law of provision, all the laws of nature. As Billy said, if you want to understand the creation, simply observe nature. Look for the creation in each person, each creature, in everything. It's simple, but the religious delusion, it's a, oh, what was that one? Was it Diane Pacula or something. It's, okay. It's almost it's coming back to my you. mind. Yeah. Well. yeah. These people can't. It, it's th- What you've just spoken about is the key and the core of the Meyer material. It, it isn't the UFOs. It isn't the extra. It isn't even the prophecies. The prophecies are a, a, a demonstration, if you will, mm-hmm. of the law of cause and effect. And explaining cause and effect, if you read it. And look, Meyer announces there will be something called the Mars Odyssey. He publishes it 12 years before it exists. Yeah. The play Aaron talk about the Oort Belt, and they say, well, it hasn't been discovered yet. The copyright proof, they describe it before we know about it. Yeah. The arrogance of the small-minded human beings who have created their gods and their authorities, the creation energy teaching what you're pointing to is it. And unfortunately, for a long time, I didn't like it. It was called the spiritual teaching, because that was the term it was most of And I knew every time I would talk about it, that because people are so indoctrinated religiously, when you say spiritual, they're thinking religion, then they're thinking cult, and they're thinking this. Mm-hmm. It's, it's too associative. Creation energy teaching, which is true, term for it, is neutral. It has no associations to the religious much. Yeah. You know, Creation, energy, you know. So, yes, that this is the core of it. And people said to me, why did you just go out and just talk about that? I said, because they don't, you think they don't listen. Everybody's an expert on UFOs and ETs and, and all this stuff, and they're all morons. And, and then you get into the prophecies and predictions and you show people. And then if you just start presenting laws of creation, laws of nature, recommendations and advice, mm-hmm. law of provision, law of this and law of that, they go numb unless there's something where they've moved a couple steps forward. Yeah. And for however and why ever they want to know more. Right. So that's where it is. If society is going to be stuck on the surface level material catalysts for their life, let's focus on number one. All right? You ready for this? So the first thing that is brought up as a point in case against Meyer is the inconsistencies in Meyer's photographs. And it states here that Meyer has presented a number of photographs that he claims show extraterrestrial craft, but many of these photographs have been shown to be hoaxes. For example, one of Meyer's most famous photographs, which shows a UFO hovering over a tree, has been demonstrated to be a model crafted from a trash can lid and other household items. So, before you respond, let me bring up the picture here, because I have it, and for those of you that are actually watching. So, right here, you have three specific shots, and this was taken on an Olympus ECR 35 millimeter camera. Okay, this is far before Photoshop, This is when if you got a bad roll of film, you were shit out of luck. Okay? So, with that, do you want to dive in here, Michael, for a second to talk about this specific craft, which is also called the Wedding Cake UFO, which was only quickly used by the play iron because the metal was too soft in our highly acidic, highly radioactive atmosphere that created pitting in the metal, which caused them to actually scrap that design altogether. But that being said, go ahead. Walk me through it. Sure. But, okay, so this craft, the wedding cake craft, and perhaps you'll have a chance to display, there are actually 64 photos of that, primarily, but not exclusively, daytime. There is, on our site, now you can prove the WC UFO for yourself or something like that. I can send you a link. It shows two photos, uh, or actually one photo that had been... uh, 
take taken from our you know online site by two different people, dropped into Photoshop where each person messed around with the contrast and brightness settings, both came up with exactly the same thing. That is a large object hovering over a gravel road at night mm -hmm. next to a grassy hillside with a, a meter high uh, road post next to it. And each of the photos show that there was an energy field around this object. And both of the colorations were a little different because they both stopped at whatever point they did in the adjustments. So let me say there is also a 74 page analysis of the wedding cake craft done by Raul Zahi, that is Francisco Vilate, and Chris Lott. They used all the latest computer technology, Google Earth, triangulations, all this stuff. Anybody who wants to know if this is a real object can go into all of that. And they, you know, we also, if you, if you provide links or whatever, we've got all these photos in our Beamship Gallery. So that being said, from 1978 on, photo analyses have been independently done, first by the investigative team, where they had Jim Delatoso doing computer analysis uh, of the photos, uh, and of original negatives, by the way, it should be said, mm -hmm. as well, even though so few had remained after that. Uh, the other physical evidence in included... Uh, well, you know, metal samples and sound recordings. There is a video of Billy Meyer, and if you, I hope you'll be able to show this to your audience. He steps into the frame, and in the distance is the wedding cake craft hovering next to a tree. Yep. Billy, with his little 35 millimeter camera, is taking photos. We show some of the photos he took. And then he zooms in on the wedding cake craft. Who knows? 400, 600 feet away, feet away. You can hear the motor on the uh, video cam. Somebody who is clever could probably calculate the distance from that based on time and all that. The I'm going to give you on the overall thing, and we can always come back to more about the wedding cake craft because there was a skeptic who tried to duplicate it. And by the way, I worked with a guy in 2009. He would send me his attempts to duplicate Meyer's photos and films, and I would always tell him where he was off so he could go back with his two hands mm -hmm. and try and make it right. And he did a very good model of the wedding cake craft, except close but absolutely no cigar. We have photographs showing the details on that that he could not hope to duplicate and didn't try. That being said, there is not one skeptic who, of course, all the idiots who made those claims have ever been able to truly duplicate, not duplicate in effect. We have people who can make good models and even set up little scenarios. and But you duplicate the actual test results of these objects, of Myers UFOs, and you find out from computer analysis and all, to which no skeptic will submit their own models because the computer can instantly, even back... Tell that it's a fake. You know, as far as when they were doing this uh, back in the late 70s, early 80s, it picks up the difference between a small model next to a, another model thing and a large object a distance from the camera. Correct. There is... There are two different special effects com uh, companies or entities, if you will. First was Wally Gentleman, who had won the uh, Academy Award for Special Effects for uh, 2001, Stanley Kubrick's film. Yep. He gave a whole quote for a book that he signed off on, and it's in there with the quotes from other scientists and and experts in sound, photographs, films, all this stuff. Each one, including Michael uh, Malin, or Malin, however he pronounces it, from Mars Orbiter. He created the camera for the Mars Orbiter mission. Oh, the photographs look good. There's no evidence of hoax. All these people who have to sign off in this book, and that in, you know included the Wally Gentleman, and they all said this is real stuff, like just as... Oh, gosh, Gordon Cooper, U.S. astronaut. Mm -hmm. these, these are good photographs. I saw them. They brought them to me. I don't know why people call them a hoax. I'm paraphrasing him. Yeah. The real experts authenticated this and have done so as recently as a few years ago with the work done by Francisco Velate and uh, Chris Locke. And uh, 
it's it's mind boggling to me that anybody pays attention to idiots who have can't duplicate, can't disprove the authenticity, can't show a hoax. The big defamer, Cal Korf, who is a defamer, a thief. He's, he's self-admitted in a lot of this stuff, and the skeptics who embrace him, they don't get it. The guy's a liar. He's a coward. He's a self-admitted pervert, a pedophile. And I was approached, you know, Cal Corf had been the big, I'm just giving you a lot here because this is this, the background on skeptics and why these people oh, yeah. are such a, you know, travesties. Cal Corf has been at, attacking the Meyer case, I guess, since uh, late 80s, early 90s, or what have you. In 2004, 2006, I was approached by a guy at the Santa Clara uh, UFO conference up there in California. He said, I, I want to introduce myself. I have an apology. I said, what are you talking about? He says, my name is Garrett Morris. I am the man that Cal Korf came to with Billy Myers' photos. And Cal said to me, I just want to see what would happen. How would you insert any lines in these photos to show that these were actually not photos of a UFO, but an object on a string? And he said, I didn't think anything of it other than, well, here's a task. And so I, I did those things for Korf, not realizing that what he was doing and what he would do would be to try to vilify and attack Billy Meyer. And he says, here's Cal's card. I've had it for a long time. Cal was also supposed to pay me for this terrible work. He said he never did. And he said, I will tell you firsthand that whole thing that Cal Korf did is based on fraud and forgery that he, in effect, had done. And he said, I'm sorry. I was a party to that. I was an instrument. Garrett ended up interviewing me twice for a TV thing in, in Northern Cal later on. Very nice guy. Yeah. Really remorseful. And there is no factual substantiation. If any skeptic wants to come on to debate it with me and bring evidence, find it dandy. But maybe... It, for people that care, we can put that one to sleep. And the UFO, the WC UFO, as I said, 74-page analysis, a do-it-yourself thing, anybody with Photoshop can, can put that photo, gold object, black background, modify those settings, and there it is. It's a real craft. Yeah, I think the trouble for a lot of people is that the photos are one, they're so clear. They're the clearest and closest photographs, and some of them are from the inside of the craft looking out, ever taken on here on planet yeah. Earth. And when they look at that, they're like, it's too simple. It has to be a model. Yeah. But think for one moment. If you were millions of years more advanced in your consciousness and thousands and thousands of years more advanced in your technology, things don't become more complicated. They become more simple. And you have to put that into your framework of design, right? Things don't need to look chaotic or separate. The ideas are ideas of unity because when things are unified, they typically tend to work better. In much of the analysis around the craft themselves, you can tell the difference between the size of an object for how far the light actually bends around the object itself when reflecting off the sun and the level of refraction itself to tell you also what type of metal it would be made out of. So there's many things that a photograph can tell out of, you know, before it even gets pre-altered for any sort of, you know, or type of analysis. And I encourage any of our listeners to go on and look at the photographs. They are truly unique. They're truly spectacular. And many of them are on video. And you did bring up a point here that Billy, in the video footage, walked forward in frame to take pictures. Why would someone yeah. do that? Well, he's not holding the damn UFO or beam ship on a string. He's actually out there to show the difference in scale and distance in himself capturing the footage again on this camera, which was an Olympus ECR 35 millimeter, right? And he took 1,476 photos. Some of the, you know, uh, original, uh, what the hell are they called? The negatives were destroyed and other things were stolen from him. And, but for the vast majority, he has accumulated more evidence photographically with the most basic camera in the 70s, with the amount of clarity that people still cannot even reproduce today. So, uh, and that's with Photoshop. Now, let me throw one thing on, for if it. I may. Um, somebody brought this up to me years ago, and uh, I, I wish I knew who to give the credit for it. They said, you have to think of something else. Billy Meyer, hundreds of photos filmed, 
video, metal sample, sound recordings, what does he do? He freely turns them over to world-class <laughs> investigators mm -hmm. who could take these and could debunk him or get the technology to debunk him. They end up authenticating it. He asks for nothing from it. He's not selling it to them. He gives it over and they go and the IBM and this and Allison. And that. Well, we're going to get into that. That's he has nothing to hide and he has nothing to gain nothing. from it either. This isn't about him. He's doing this so that everybody can advance, right? And he wants people to prove it to themselves. So let's go into part two, like you just said. Let's talk sure. about lack of physical evidence. And so it says here, <laughs> despite his claims of contact with extraterrestrial beings, Meyer has never produced any physical evidence to support his claims. For example, he has never produced any alien artifacts or specimens. Now... You and I both know that is false. Yes. In one specific point, okay, he was given metal samples. These metal samples were handed over to a gentleman named Marcel Vogel. Now, for everybody out there to know a little bit about the history of IBM and how things are stored in terms of hard disk memory on computers, you can thank this gentleman. Marcel Vogel clearly understood that on crystalline structures, you could store resonant frequencies. And in these frequencies, essentially crystals, you could save information. And the first thing that was saved was actually a photographic image of the Mona Lisa, which was stored in the crystal and then retaken back. And then before you know it, Marcel Vogel comes up with the floppy disk with his team over at IBM. And the man has many patents out there. And so beyond that, with a spectral chemical analysis, he had given a piece of evidence. He was given a piece of evidence from Billy Meyer. So do you want to talk about this piece of evidence here, if you don't mind? Sure. I'll talk about it a little to, to the level of my own capabilities. Uh, I should say that he was the holder. You mentioned patents. He was the holder, a co-holder of 32 patents. When he was a 10-year-old boy, he discovered or, or synthesized the chemicals that create bioluminescence in fireflies. That was about the time in terms of my life when I was bouncing a rubber ball off the wall. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, okay, it's fun. So he set up an electron scanning microscope, and he also did use, oh, what do you call that? The spectroscopy? Infer yeah. Was it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're talking so about. So he used it. The breakdown yeah, he was of chemicals, right, on a, essentially yes. a band of light to see what chemicals make it up in the analysis. Right. And and when we had originally been promoting the fact that he had, uh, you know, used uh, magnification through a, a microscopic magnification, we were attacked by some guy saying, well, you can't determine what kind of metals. And we said, well, he used this, you know, spectroscopy. spectrographic analysis, right spectrographic analysis and the guy then oh okay sorry you know they, they're always looking for something to attack and he marcel vogel uh filmed or videotaped that it's available online and we probably have it somewhere too and he said with any technology available to me as a scientist at ibm i, I can't duplicate this metal with its fine laser cuttings and every element in the periodic table in discrete relationship to each other not mushed together as if this thing was put into a blast furnace or something mm -hmm. he said i can't do this and he says it's either a cold fusion process, which I don't have either, or made in the vacuum of outer space. So he put it out there as it was. And there were uh, uh, some when people found out that they had these samples, there was a guy who said, oh, it's just lead. You know, it's really nothing. So the CIA and others got in as quickly as they could to try to always derail these things. But Vogel put it out. Now, Billy still has samples. So people have said to me, and then I'll mention the other physical evidence, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a couple categories. Um, people say, well, since he still has those samples, why don't you turn them over? I said, I'll tell you why. It's very simple. Any, even the most credible scientist, which is a little hard to find these days, who isn't been, hasn't been bought off and doesn't have an axe to grind or wants to write a book, uh, if he or she goes through that analysis and comes to the same determinations as Vogel, then the question will be asked to him. So, sir, ma'am, are you saying that that was made by extraterrestrials? And an honest scientist has to say, I cannot prove that. 
but you have to think it through for yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, would be the other answer. If it wasn't made by us, but a, an honest person says, I can't prove because I can't prove extraterrestrials. I mean, we can prove that in 15 minutes, but so you get nowhere with a reexamination just like you get nowhere with more analyses of photos, we have to move on. But two other categories of evidence, the sound recordings. Yeah. The sounds, mm -hmm. and, you know, you can play those if you want. Those were analyzed, and, and we have it in many of our films and videos. We show they're graphing it, and the thing's got like 32 different interfacing frequencies. You know, Billy Meyer, he's outside in a field. <laughs> holding a mic. He's got the big recording box and a microphone. He's holding yeah. in the air like this. Yeah. Waiting he's for a lightning bolt to hit him. Yeah. And everybody's watching this. And they're here. People came from four kilometers away trying to figure out what are those booming sounds? Nobody you know, could tell. So they take it to four different sound labs, including the Naval Undersea Labs at Groton. I think it's Groton, Connecticut. Yeah, Groton, Connecticut. Yeah, and Correct. They, they all come up with. Right. And Excalibur Sound Labs. I've been to Excalibur Sound Labs in L.A. I actually did some recording there years ago. I met Nils Rodnerud. I never met Stephen Ambrose, but these are found, uh, sound engineers. All of the labs said we can't duplicate that unless we get a bank of synthesizers. And even then, it's a little complicated because some of those things are implying of their tone. And it's very sophisticated. So, one idiot skeptic says, well, all you have to do is take a fishing line outside and rub it. And you'll get, no, no. Some other guy graphed a fishing line. So, you know, he did the graphs on it, the sound graphs. That's physical evidence that exists to this day. You can pull it off the internet, go and do your own graphing of it. You're not going to be able to duplicate it. You no. know, maybe now with synthesizers, but you could one other category. And I've been, you know, I started going to Switzerland in 2000 and I saw it's, it's uh, somewhat been reduced and size, deteriorated a bit. But one of the, one of the two trees that Meyer fired the laser gun through, there is an oval hole all the way through it, smooth as glass. So the skeptics, oh, you know, it's a, it's a toy gun. No, of course not because the investigators went to every toy store in Europe or wherever they were, they couldn't find and match it. It's not like close enough. Remember, like you said, these people are millions of years ahead of us mm -hmm. in consciousness, and they're going to make us work and fight and argue, hopefully to evolve to a place where human can say, well, wow, hard as that may be to figure out, that is not a toy made on earth. And then you've got the, the whole, and I saw it singed on the outside glass smooth. Now, here's the thing that was documented. When the investigators got there, because someone said Billy's in the forest, and I had the gun, they went. And by that time, the gun had been taken away, but there's still smoldering things here and there. They took a string and they ran it through the hole in the tree, straight through the forest in a straight line. And guess what? All the branches where it, that beam would have intersected, they were all bubbling. They'd been Remarkable. destroyed, basically, all the way through. And there was also a large piece of a tree. There's some photos, I'd have to go back and find them, where Billy had shot at a higher branch or something, and it had been destroyed and it was on the ground. So the, not one of these imbeciles has ever gone to Switzerland. They've never looked at the remaining tree. They've never interviewed any of the eyewitnesses. They've never walked in the areas where the photos and films were taken. They've never bothered. They've simply used their small brains and many of them with the help of the intelligence services. And you know, if, um, if anyone ever looked at a laser, most lasers, many of them, especially very advanced, high-powered lasers are built off of, you know, certain parabolic disks, right, and magnifying optics. And when you do something like that, there's one shape that it gives you, circle, round, perfectly round. And what's uniquely interesting about the weapon that was fired, right, and the physical evidence that is still over there in Switzerland is that it is oval. It's completely obtuse to how we currently manufacture and use lasers today, right? And I think that that's frankly like quite remarkable. And if I'm also correct on physical evidence, Samyase, which was one of the extraterrestrials, gave a lock of her hair to Billy. He had asked for that. That's one. 
And then another one of Billy's good friends, Guido Moosebrugger, has an apple that was given to him, which he has stored in like a vat of alcohol for, I couldn't even tell you how long, and I'm surprised the thing hasn't rotted yet. But this was a piece of physical evidence given to him from the, which Billy had taken out of the ship, you know, asked, you know, hey, can I give this to my friend or I'm hungry? I forget what the joke was. Um, and that's still a physical piece of evidence that does exist and hasn't been eaten today, right? And analyze that piece of fruit. I mean, I would love to have the seeds and that thing to plant some fruit trees here on earth. I'd be very, very excited about that cultivation. But he planted, uh, there's a peach tree. I don't know if it's still blooming in Boston, but there is a peach tree that had been brought from Ara and they. Oh, no way. In front of yes. Oh, super cool. And there's information about that in there. By the way, about the lasers, I remember years ago reading about the core, C O R E. There was something kind of a laser that um, it, there were two elements that were combined and it produced a laser. But I am. I'm a very low tech person. I don't analyze photographs. Or so I mean, can use my common sense, but yeah. lasers and all, all that's above my pay grade. But I remember I read it and then I was looking at the photo of the core, uh, no, of the laser gun that was being held by Benara, I believe in one of the photos and that there was this thing on it. And I was pondering, I'm wondering if they used for that some type of a thing that's a repository for elements that get combined. You're talking about Maybe the box that, that sat on top of the gun. Yeah. Like it was, so yeah, like it was almost like the magazine of elements, right? Which get forced down to create yeah. whatever this emission is. I never had any uh, information verification or, you know, denial about that. But, you know, when you see something in the Meyer material, it sticks in your mind, especially when years or decades later, something pops up and you go, wait a minute. I already know that from Billy Meyer. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's absolute nonsense. There's an abundance. What do people think those photographs are? No, I know. No evidence. This just shows you that anybody, let's just say in America, that has ever paid attention to this debunking is so hopelessly, willfully stupid that they should have a caretaker and somebody to wipe their mouth when they drool. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and, you know, uh, speaking of the physical evidence, and if I remember correctly from the metal samples, and if I read properly, a majority of the metals through a cold fusion process, which the play iron use, start with lead. Now, lead is the base material which they use to then fuse other atoms to it to change it in its element, the structure of it as an element to create nickel and I forget what the other things that come from it to design the alloy, which they have created for their ships. And the beautiful mm -hmm. part about it, what they found is that if you scratch these alloys, these alloys actually heal at a molecular level. And that's only something that has a cold fusion bond, which would have the ability to do that, which we currently don't have those processes here on earth. I think Marcel Vogel spoke about something about that. When I scratched the element, uh, this happened and that happened. I was very surprised. So, yeah, they pull. Again, this is it's, – It's remarkable. So at a scientific yeah. level, what's happening is it's, it's taking elements from the air or the atmosphere around it and pulling them in and causing it to bind to this other material to essentially fill those gaps. Wow. It's, from, it's, it's, it's staggering stuff. So it's Great to know that. Yeah, so let's go to, let's go to number three here. And sure. I'm, I hope you have notes on this because I haven't found any inconsistencies yet, but you'll tell me. So inconsistency in Meyer's stories. Meyer has given numerous accounts of his alleged contacts with the play Aaron, but many of these accounts have been shown to be inconsistent and contradictory. Mm -hmm. I, I don't even know where <laughs> they could point this out, but it's one of the claims online. It's like someone just says something as a blanket statement. Okay, well then point out the example from the over... 1,000, like 800 contact reports and 50 plus books and interviews that he's done. I have never seen anything that has been inconsistent. I, you know, it's it, it, who is this knucklehead that says such a stupid thing? Look, like you just said, you know, I've, I I've frequently these days I try to let people know we have charted over 250 specific error free examples of Myers prophetically accurate information. Yep. We have found no theoretical information, no redacted, corrected, incorrect information. And we're talking science, geopolitics, environment, medical, economic information, no errors and no inconsistencies. 
Now, we don't, we can't even get a weather report seven days in advance. Mm-hmm. He's talking 30, 50, 60, 70 years in advance. Oh, yeah. All right, great. So we have more dummies who have paid attention to this dummy, whoever he or she may be. Now, <laughs> I mean, it's so staggering to me that people would would even not check this out and try. He, like you said, they never pointed to what they're they're talking about. I'll give you my own personal experience with inconsistency, consistency. Mm-hmm. I think it's 2006 when I first, I was with Billy and looked over, he had at that time, it may have been newly acquired the first laser printer that they had. He's got a Mac computer and a laser printer. And the papers were all, you know, out of it. Like, <laughs> like I said, people like a bad haircut, you know, it's just going everywhere. It's all these yeah. papers. And I look over and Billy's, you know, just, he gets everything. He says, oh yeah, that, that. He says, I write the spiritual teaching for the play iron too. You know, there's just matter of fact, like, would you like sugar in your coffee? So um, I write the, you know, the spiritual teaching for the play iron. And Quetzal, well, Quetzal always has to come here. He has to come up, you know, and beam down and go and get the papers from the printer. Mm-hmm. And then he has to go and he gets beamed up again. Then he has to go back to the play iron. And they have to take all the paper. And he said, so Next week, Zafanat Paneak is coming, and he's going to fix my computer so that instead of all of that fussing and nonsense, um, I will only have to type in something so that what I have typed of the teaching will go to a separate little disk above the earth, and it will transmit to the play area. And so I said, I see. And it, suddenly I'm saying to myself, this guy, because I only met him for six years at that point, He's got an IT from outer space. I'll tell you a funny <laughs> other story about that too. He's got an IT from outer space. So I came six months later because this was when we were working on the filming. And six months later, Billy's seen a lot of people, a lot of things have happened. It snowed, it rained, whatever. Yeah. So I'm sitting in the office and I says, um, see, so Billy, uh, what about the computer? You know, have you had a pro? Oh, yeah. He said, yes, that's some time ago. Zafana Panayak had to come and fix something. It's not so long ago, really, but, uh, you know, he fixed it because I write the spirit. He did the whole thing. I write the spiritual teaching for the player, and Quetzal always has to come and get it and be go to the ship. And then I always come and fix it. And the whole story, you know, without missing a beat. And he says, and he did that. He fixed, but there's something else. He screwed something else up on the computer. He's got to come back. I said, okay, right, sure. So that was two times and two more times a year apart from each. Same question, casually popped it, threw the same thing out, no hesitation, didn't feel offended. I asked him again. And I just have to tell you a sideline that I've never mentioned publicly before. (laughs) So it happens that um, some years ago I was – previously married to somebody who was significantly younger than I was. And it had an expiration date to it. And um, I was talking to my daughter about this on the phone because my then soon to be ex had asked Billy for some help, you know, just so we could do everything right. And Billy talked to Pata about it. <laughs> of all things. And Billy, and I got an email back saying Pata suggests the following. Okay. So I'm telling my daughter and my daughter says, my daughter is just very matter of fact. Mm. She says, dad, let me see if I understand this. You have a marriage counselor from outer space, but you can't find out when the next earthquake is going to hit California. I just about fell off my chair. She's just, she's just like, mm, I see, you know, she's never been that into this thing. You know, but she, every now and then she asked me stuff about, but that was it. That's remarkable. You know, it was like, Oh, it was so funny. It was just truly so funny. So every now and then, you know, here and there, maybe I've had some information that I need. Not that was, you know, personal. But generally, you, if you get information, you get it for the sake of the mission. Mm-hmm. Not, for, but I recognize certain things about that whole situation. Why it may have been important for me to wake up a little bit at that yeah. time and move on. So. People who, you know, inconsistencies and all the rest, 
one last thing, speaking of the same source. Sure. In 2009, the lunatic skeptic Cal Korf contacted me uh, and said, hey, why don't we do a project together, a DVD project together? You can give the whole pro Billy Meyer thing and I'll give the other side. It'll be real nice. I won't do any attacks or anything. And I'm not somebody that carries grudges and stuff. I said, well, okay, I guess we could do that. And then I thought for a little bit. So I wrote to Switzerland and I said, Hey, you know, Cal Corp just approached me and Christian Freiner is, the, you know, Billy's main assistant there. And he said, well, you know, uh, do what you want. You, you know, you are free to do anything you want. Not us to tell you. I said, of course, but I want you to know. But then a couple of days after that, I get an email from Christian and he says, oh, maybe you will wait for just a little bit on that thing because Billy was thinking about it, and he said that he thought he wants to ask Patah about that. So he did, and then he said, Florina came on behalf of Patah, Florina being one of the female extra. Now, this will sound bizarre to people. It doesn't matter because it's, it's just anecdotal. We can't, I can't actually prove it. That's the weird part. Yep. Um, anyway, it's anecdotal, but uh, Florina is coming, and she uh, meets with Billy, and I will send you the transcript. I said, okay. So a day or two later, I get a transcript. And you know how they are, those people who know Billy's transcripts. Mm -hmm. uh, welcome. Mm -hmm. It's good to see you. Ah, yes, my friend. It's blah, blah, blah. Very mundane stuff. And then uh, he says, I think you are here to tell me what Patah had to say about uh, Michael Horn's proposed project with Cal Korf. And, and then she says, yes, Patah said the following about this because Michael Horn does not realize that this is a trap that's being set that could damage you, Billy, in the mission and hurt Michael as well. And uh, Cal Korf is somebody who is not well mentally. He's a kind of like a schizophrenic, paranoid schizophrenic person, and he has an agenda here. And we simply advise Michael to forego this opportunity or something like nice. that, right? Mm -hmm. So, and I, of course, I have all that and I posted it online because Cal, I, I got in touch with Cal and I said, Cal, thanks, but no thanks. You do whatever you want to do. And Cal, you know, on his website, he, it was, you know, Michael and I are going to do this wonderful project. As soon as it was clear to him that you weren't doing it, that we weren't, that website had 300, I counted them, attacks against Billy, against me, and death threats. It was so bad that I actually, from, by outreach, and he, he was on foreign-based web hosting, I had two websites took down his website and the subsequent one he tried to put up because they were so virulent wow. and ugly. And, death threats. and one of the people that I contacted that wrote – personal information back saying we had been contacted by this Mr. Korf and we'd been contacted after a beloved member of our team died. Korf writes to us asking for his job. I mean, it was, just, it's all this weird stuff, right? Yeah. But I put it up online and because I posted that letter and it was days later that exactly what they said, there was a trap waiting to be sprung and Korf then tried to launch his attacks via a website rather sure. than a DVD. So inconsistencies, I don't think so. No, not at all. Thank you. So let's then go into passing consistencies. Let's go into lack of corroboration. So it says here that Myers claims have never been corroborated by any other witnesses or sources. In fact, many of the people who have investigated his claims found them to be fraudulent. So there's a couple points when this this actually, this breaks through here. So let's talk about the Ashok Ashram. Okay. I'm sure you have some information sure. on that. And then yep. let's talk about the people on the night watch. Sure. Uh, specifically around the Samyase Silver Star Center in Hinterschmidt Rudi, Switzerland. So you want to kick us off with that? Sure. Billy Meyer, during his uh, 50s and 60s or so, he traveled around the world and he studied the world's major religions. One of his travels took him to the Ashoka Ashram in Maroli, India, where there was an elderly monk, Dharmavarna, Dhar mm -hmm. Dharmavara, I believe his name was, who ultimately died at about 110, 116, something Remarkable. astronomical in California. Yep. Dharmavara, right, had, I think it's a granddaughter, uh, Pobol Cheng, who had a brother, and there's photographs of Dharmavara with Pobol and her brother, grandson of, if I've got it right, grandson, 
relationship there, uh, taken at the time. And what happened was it said that during this time when Meyer was there, he was meeting with Esket, the second contact person, a different extraterrestrial group called Timars, T-I-M-A-R-S, from the so-called Dahl universe. His earliest photographs, save for one, there's one from 1959 that was not necessarily identified, but the 1964 photographs that he took were of Asket's ships. And uh, there's one photograph in particular that you would say it's almost one of the classic lights in the sky. Love UFO I love, actually there's love eight, that photo. Isn't it beautiful? Yeah. Eight lights in the sky, but in the foreground, if you make it out, there's the silhouetted and, and somewhat detailed uh, body of a young woman who was the, I think, like the nanny or something for Pobo. So it was said that uh, Meyer had uh, many witnesses to the ships and even to ask it. So years later, Pobo Cheng grows up and she becomes a diplomat at the UN for her actual country, which was Cambodia, served for a dozen years. And this would be also very important uh, evidence and documentation when I get interrogated by Joe Tisk, the former USAF OSI Department of Defense in investigator supervisor, interrogated me for three months. He was a skeptic when he started. Five months after that, in August of 2017, he came out stating that the Meyer case was 100% authentic. A guy tasked with protecting the security of the U.S., yeah. you know, sideline, but he investigated the Po Bol Ching documentation even deeper than I did. And he said, yes, indeed, she was a diplomat at the UN, perfect record, all that good stuff. And he referred to something which many of us seen, which was her video presentation. I think it was at the IU FOC, maybe it was 1998 or so, where she and uh, one of her friends, uh, another Indian woman who had been at the ashram at the time, described seeing the craft, seeing Billy walking with Asket, no, mentioning that there were so many, a hundred other eyewitnesses. Mm. Plus she had personal, she said, Asket used to come sometimes into her room at night, just before sleeping. Asket would sit down and she'd hum little tunes or whatever, and occasionally just stroke her hair. And she said, I would wake up in the morning, always feeling like I knew a lot more than when I went to bed at night. <laughs> so you, and, and there was like Joe Tisk said, there was nothing in it positive for Po Bol Cheng, retired UN diplomat, to come forward and say this is a real UFO case. I've seen the UFO. Mm -hmm. I've seen the extraterrestrial. We have a hundred eyewitnesses. Here's where it happened. This blah blah and the other thing. And uh, I another thing in the film that we produced at, around that time, two thousand six, two thousand eight was released called "The Silent Revolution of Truth." We show. Of course, Billy, but we show Pobol Chang speaking. And what I did is I had it, th this, there's a segment where both Billy and separately Pobol are speaking with the sound off because I brought in a guy named Michael Arndt, who was a body reading specialist who trained military, special forces and mm -hmm. all, for being mm -hmm. able to instantly read you know, body language, because that was often a first cue before somebody shoots at you or something. And so he's sitting there and, and he said to both about both Billy and Poe Bell, but I'll speak about Poe Bell, po Ball specifically. She appears to be telling the truth. She's saying what she believes. She's congruent. She's consistent. Of course, he said the same thing about Billy. So I had even brought in a, a, a psychotherapist to express skeptic and and you know neutral points of view about ufos and because when this film when i brought this film out and made with my partner jack gerlach that i wanted people to have an even-handed viewing of it i even put a skeptic in there to make his best case which he had to withdraw <laughs> i loved it after the film came out but the point being there is not there's the evidence is real. There's no inconsistencies. Mm -hmm. There are more witnesses. There's five other photographers. You mentioned the Night Watch. Yes. Because we also showed in Silent Revolution of Truth several people who were, because they're core group members and all they participate in what's called the Night Watch, where members come, come through the deep, dark hours of, you know, the late night to evening, uh, pardon me, early morning, to patrol the grounds up there because there have been so many attempts to kill Billy, mm -hmm. and they've continued, you know, uh, and all. And 
these people have been eyewitness to the craft themselves. Some people have accidentally seen the extraterrestrials. We have a couple of people talking about that in the film. You know, if people want, it's, it's in my opinion, as modest as I can be about something, even better in some ways than the films I made myself. I think it's the best UFO film ever made for a simple reason. We present not only the UFO evidence, but we get past the UFO evidence. Mm -hmm. We even get into, you know, creation energy teaching and prophecies and all the rest. But the eyewitnesses there, there are to date over 120 eyewitnesses. I'm one. There's five other photographers. Many of those other eyewitnesses are eyewitnesses to multiple events. So, this is what's been kept from you, ladies and gentlemen, while your demonic, delusional, destructive government plunges headlong in, taking the topic of UFOs and UAPs, making it into an extraterrestrial threat to create more money for more weapons, for more dead-end wars, predictions going back 10,000 years of mm -hmm. what those wars will do to this country, find a safe place Get yourself connected to other like-minded people, whether they're connected to the minor material, to no material, even people who may have a, a religious mindset, if they're good people, pull together. Because what's coming to this country that could have been avoided had we not been lied to and had we, the people of the country and the world, used our brains is now unstoppable. <laughs> Let's move on to some Absolutely. other <laughs> Absolutely. And to be clear... Sure. There are negatively oriented spacefaring races. That has to oh, be yeah. a, that has to be abundantly clear. But the focus, yes, is one us coming together as a unified humanity right here on our planet to protect ourselves from those groups and also incoming uh, asteroid impacts or things from space but mm -hmm. also as coming together to prevent our own internal destruction. That should be our number one risk before we worry about invading extraterrestrials coming to take us. <laughs> so who wants to take over a group that's already destroying themselves? Nobody wants to do that. What a waste of time. What a waste of resources. And I, I would assume that would be boring for that group. So number five, and if anyone's ever seen Meyer, he's got tattoos all over him. And they'd be like, well, a few, yeah, a few. Well, for some people, one's enough, right? But now he's got a, he's got a couple on his arm, one arm. Now let's talk about Meyer's criminal record here. Meyer has a criminal record that includes convictions for fraud and forgery, which cast doubt on his credibility. You want to talk about this? Well, first of all, it's a lie. He was not ever convicted of fraud. No, he was not. He was never accused no. of it. He wasn't tried for that. Yeah, you can check and go is, through the Swiss documentation for the local area right. over there, too. You won't find anything. You won't find it. It's not there. Um, what happened, and Meyer speaks about it. Uh, he spoke more about the childhood events in The Last Contact. He had an extremely brutal childhood, not from his family, not from extraterrestrials, from school teachers, schoolmates, other people who could not handle his intelligence and his knowledge at an early age, which he would naively reveal, though he didn't reveal the source, and that he revealed about things pertaining to ancient history and to, uh, you know, oh gosh, you know, creatures that lived on the earth and where and all sorts of things that so threatened these very closed-minded authoritarians who were in his school system that they would literally beat him bloody mm -hmm. and uh, persecute him, as did other people. There was a family or there were some people in his area who for years and years were dedicated to destroying him and who worked with other people in a religious sect hell-bent on exactly that and even aligning themselves with some people of extraterrestrial origin who were contributing even technologically to that effort. So what happened was when he was a teenager at a certain point, he ran away to get away from it all. He And th let me go back just a second. In other words, those early years, five, six, and seven, he's already meeting with and time traveling with Svath, yes. who's taking him <laughs> in all sorts of times and places and showing him history as it really came about. Now, this is a young boy who has 
a spirit form in him that is enormously evolved, but has to be brought into uh, its potential as his consciousness had to be brought forward through technological means, as well as just the tutoring with Svath. And he's spoken about what happened, but he's at a very early age. And even some of the venturing forth that he did by himself, where a disc was put at his disposal as a young boy, Svath would tell him where to go. And, and in the clearing, there was the disc and he'd be taken in it. It had been programmed to take him where and or when he was to observe certain things and learn. Mm -hmm. And Svath could appear on the screens inside and out. This is beyond sci-fi with, you know, <laughs> we have no concept of what's re really going on. So he, as a young boy, knows all this. And anytime he comes forward, and he tries to put information to the world. He had school teachers and a pastor who helped him. Zimmerman, even Father Carl Zimmerman, Jung, correct? Father Zimmerman and Carl Jung, the famous psychologist, I didn't was know one who came. Yes, and it's in the contacts. But Carl Jung had to remain silent because he knew that he he was on a different path in terms of his work. But he helped Jung Meyer, as did Father Zimmerman, uh, Professor Lehman, and another professor. And they disseminated in 1951, when Meyer's 14, he's disseminating the warnings to the whole world about what's coming. And those letters are posted up on, in, you know, in the posted form on, on our websites. People could read this. In 1951, you know, what is that, 24 years yeah. later or whatever? Uh, for, uh, Billy Meyer is warning about every manifestation of environmental destruction, man-made global warming, climate change, ozone damage. That now is, you know, the cause celebre in the world among all the know nothing environmentalists who are too stupid to get to the core root of the pa problem of the overpopulation underlying everything and do all these ridiculous, selfish, self aggrandizing, destructive things in society that don't solve the problem. Okay. That being said, yeah. yes, I might yeah. be talking real fast here because I know our time is a little limited. So let me just say, Meyer goes into the French Foreign Legion, early teens, and he gets trained in things and he realizes, I know how to do this now, but I don't want to be a killer. That's not my gig. He walks out of the French Foreign Legion across the desert. Isn't that There's punishable guys that by death? Away. That's punishable by death, correct? To leave the French Foreign Legion? Oh, yeah. You leave the French Foreign Legion, they catch you, they'll shoot you. Mm -hmm. You know, that'd be just like, yeah, boom. So there's two other guys that follow him. And Meyer has a canteen, and he, even when it's just about out of water, he pretends to drink from it, hold it up to to get these guys to keep going to follow him. I don't know what the, I forget if there was an outcome if these guys made it or not, but Billy made it out, and then he basically turned himself in. He says, "I have to, you know, I have to turn myself in to get whatever that punishment from the society was." See all the parasites out there whose personal lives look like the garbage behind a McDonald's would, you know, they want to try and, oh, you know, Billy Meyer, he's a, he was a criminal. No, he was a teenage guy who did things that are, they don't even come close to what 12 year old kids are doing with a K this and that's these Correct. days, let alone the grown ups in our world. So get off your high horses. You people, are, you know, you're pathetic, you're shameful and shamelessly pathetic. So you get the true story. If you want to read it, you can go. And then people could say, well, I don't believe it, or I do believe it, or I think it's because you can't prove it. You're not there. Mm -hmm. But then you take mm -hmm. the body of work. And like Joe Tisk said in his wonderful thing where he put it up, on, he says, listen, people, UFO researchers are too stupid. I engaged with two of them. They, they don't know what they're doing. So I'm not going to talk to anyone because he volunteered to take on skeptics for us sure. in this work. He said, I'm sorry. I got to leave that alone. They're stupid. So I've written this article for you. Anybody can figure out how to determine for yourself if this man's telling the truth and you have certain questions you can ask you know, how did he always know where to be to take these photos and then the moving pictures the films and this and that he says just follow the protocol determine the truth for yourself and that's that should be enough for any intelligent person i'd say that would be enough and another part of billy's criminal record is that he was actually being beaten by a woman and he grabbed the yes. towel or something and actually beat her back in defense of himself. Yes. Right. And I think the yes. authorities arrested him for doing that. And 
Where was that? Do you know where that was geographically? That would be in Switzerland, and, and uh, that would I don't remember the details of the location and the consequence, but he wasn't, I don't think he was, he, maybe he was put in some reform school thing briefly, but I'd have to go back to read it. It doesn't seem problem. to be that that was a, a, yeah, a big det- detainment event. No, no, seems totally was, fine. And this one I, I, I personally really enjoy here. And, and we had, we had briefed on this quickly, but Meyer's financial motives. So it says here that Meyer has made a significant amount of money from his claims. Okay gosh, including selling books, videos, and other merchandise. I'm sure he's got mugs and t-shirts that he sells. This has led (laughs) many to believe that his claims are motivated by financial gain rather than a genuine desire to share his experiences. So on the most recent photo I've seen of Billy, he's wearing the same clothing he always wears with the same damn pair of glasses, which don't look like they've ever been updated, with the same minimalist watch he wears on his one arm, tucked into his jeans, leather belt, and the guy is in the most grounding pair of flip-flops you could ever imagine. And that's all he wears. Birkenstocks. Yeah, Birkenstocks. And from what I know, right, the books are expensive to print. I've spent ample time in my past, um, you know, doing work, helping print shops fix themselves, very large ones here in the United Mm -hmm. States. And I know the cost to get something of quality made. And some people are like, oh, he's just making an absolute racketeering fortune off of the things he's publishing. No. First of all, he writes these things in German. They put them in good quality because even the Playaren have stated that you need to have these things in physical books because it's different than reading it off of electronic devices, which is fundamentally important and the brain receives it much differently. And because you build it of quality, these things last longer, right? Because it is a material thing. And with those costs involved... All that Figu tries to do is cover their costs with the prints. And then other people, like Figu Lands Group Canada, or even here in the United States, right, uh, with PSI, they translate these things on their own free time, right? They're not, it's not like there's all this extra work and extra money that's made through, you know, the rigmarole of getting these books printed. Am I am I wrong here? Am I off base for a second? Just filling in on no, this? No, you're right. It, th- this is more of the parasitical hypocrisy of people. And I'll get to the real fact. But so people would damn somebody for putting out material at their own cost, Mm -hmm. you know, at their own cost, that nobody is forced to buy. No one's forced to buy it. You're not forced to to buy anything. But let's get to the real facts of the matter. Billy Meyer has a group called FIGU. Let's put it this way. He's part of of Figu. He has mm-hmm. one vote in his organization. That is a non-profit group functioning according to very strict Swiss law. You don't get around a you know Swiss law, we're a non-profit group, and then you're not. That means that Billy Meyer is not profit. He's not the one receiving. Every year that they have a public meeting, and, and it's even when they don't, it's there, all of the accounting for every penny that's come in from the sale of the books and stuff or donations is all listed and accounted for. Mm -hmm. They basically go to that break-even point, you know, because all the money they get in as this publishing group goes to publish Billy's books, which are very well made for the reason you, Alexander, just stated. Now, the people, the hypocritical bottom feeders that want to attack that probably spend what, you know, let's say a book, books will go for 40 to most of the, you know, the teaching books, 40 to 75. Yeah. 40 to 70, probably 75 on a high end. Yeah. 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 You can get the photo book is more expensive and the average is probably in really a $50, but whatever, whatever it averages off. I wonder how many of those hypocrites spend that much money on coffee, on drugs, Mm -hmm. on you name it, on something gaming online or whatever their thing is without giving it a second thought because they can't come up with a first thought. Press the button. So you have wonderful books. It's like, you know, I reach for one. These things are printed with the German on one side 
and the English and the English. So they caught that's twice as much. I can hear the fresh material. binding on that. That sounds really nice. Yes. I'm a sucker for a good yes. book. Too. Billy's book that drives me nuts, it's so wonderful, is that From the Depths of Outer Space. It's an adventure book. Of, it's all true tales of Meyer's life and, and the play Arns kind of, and so, and it's just like you learn things in there. I used to say, you know, Billy Meyer, who is Billy Meyer? You know, uh, it's Lawrence of Arabia meets Indiana Jones meets Luke Skywalker. And <laughs> it's all real. It. Yeah. You know, the man known as the Phantom in the Middle East, mm -hmm. Billy Meyer, you know, it, it's just like, and all people that rush to watch make believe because their lives are make believe. They don't know what they're doing. And, but that's it. It's a Marvel heroes. Why do you think there's so much hero stuff in our society? Because people aren't their own heroes. No, I they look for it on the outside. One. I'll be my own hero. I used to sing it at Tony Robbins workshops because he's all about, you know, the bring out the giant and, you know, whatever. And he called me up. Hey, can you come and sing? I'll be my own hero at a fire walk. Oh yeah, I'll do that. Because that's what Meyer is teaching people, not cults, not belief systems, not follow gurus. And Billy Meyer, each human being is the smith of their own destiny. Love smith that. Forge. Absolutely love the smith quote. It's, it's actually one of my favorites. Boom. So for people who want to really live and know what life is about, this is a great body of material. You don't believe it. It's like... You have a book. It's a it's a course book. It's a study book. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, he says this. He says that. How do I figure that out? Well, I can search for that. Or, mm -hmm. okay, he suggests this. Okay, I'll do that thing. And then I want, it, do I get that result? Then you know if it's a good teaching. That's all you got to know. Not. You got to test it yourself, right? Because then you, it out. you get rid of belief. And when the belief is gone, you find the facts for yourself. And that's true, independent, free thinking. And beyond that, when you talk about the Samyase Silver Star Center and they talk about Myers financial motives, there's horticulture that is run there for a totally self-sustaining operation, right? They're not actually looking for a huge financial gain. The place actually looks relatively the same. And I'm, if I'm correct, no other new major construction projects have actually happened for a very long time. And it's not like people are driving <laughs> Lamborghinis up to the gate of this place. You know what I mean? The only people driving fancy car up there were from the Ukraine consulate when they came up in an armor-plated Mercedes limousine and three men got out of the vehicle, this is months ago, and launched a six-propeller drone to film the whole place mm -hmm. because uh, people in Ukraine who were in Zelensky's inner circle were pleading with Billy for him and or the play Aaron to do something because they know that Zelensky's a Nazi and he's killing their own people and he's causing their soldiers to be killed. And they know that their own soldiers are killing Ukrainian. And Billy said, I'm sorry, we cannot do it. And so after this outreach, pardon me, it's okay. after this outreach, then this limousine comes up and all that's a whole other story. But I know of no major, they will build uh, something for, some plant, you know, gardening or plant or some kind of facility to improve something. They're not completely self-sustaining. Uh, they they grow what they can grow, and mm -hmm. during certain seasons, they can't probably. But also, when people come to the center, and all, Billy goes out personally, and he supervises the selection of foods, and fruits, and vegetables, and things for the guests, for people, not only for the people that live and work at the Figu you know, a volunteer there, but for people that come for meetings or anything else, so that there is always on the kitchen table, there's a bowl of fruit and there's nuts and there's dried fruit and all this stuff and cheese and bread. The people that have attacked this in their merciless, shameless ignorance inside when they finally, in one lifetime or another, realize what they've contributed to, realize what damage they've done to their own evolution, and holding other people back from knowing the truth because they were greedy for attention and celebrity, this alien addiction idiots that I did the thing with. I thought, oh, maybe another group wants to know the truth. Nah, the UFO industry, this isn't ufology, folks. This is the teaching of the truth of the life of the spirit, as you've pointed yep. out before. 
and really, in a sense, freely given. Yes, you can buy the books, but there's so much freely made available. There's tons you free. Know yeah. what this was about? You never have. If you honestly didn't want to, you don't have to read any of the books. Just look at the Aquarian publishings and the pamphlets and the contact reports and everything from every website that other people choose to host online, including including yourself about the case and the material itself. And so we go ahead publish it. It's other people, yeah, it's free. It's just there for the taking. So. Everybody will have to determine the truth for themselves, and we will have to learn to be of good cheer, which this is very helpful for. Yeah. In a world where demonstrably every day we now have the norm uh, is something or there are things that happen every day, the norm in our world, that were unknown and unbelievable going back 50 years ago, 60 years ago. And even more recently, we have degenerated where the aggression and the, the psyche is so damaged in human beings and the consciousness, they cannot even deal with their own problems. They reach for a weapon and they take it out on others. I, I mentioned something on a conversation recently where I, I just saw 15, 20 minutes of a new TV series called The Citadel. Mm -hmm. And that 15 minutes told me why this country will destroy itself down to the, you know, the last stub. Right. The psychopathy of, or psychopathy if you want, of those who created the show, those who participate in it, and the psychopathy that ref it reflects in our society with brutality and murder. And even as somebody who likes adventure and espionage films and thrillers to mm -hmm. a degree, it was so toxic and so assaulting of the psyche and the consciousness that just knowing it exists and it's already popular. I mentioned it. I don't mean it's not the, if you attracted to that, you need to think about your life because it is the reflection of the destruction of the corporation that's been called the United States of America, mm -hmm. built on murder, deceit, and destruction, aggression, and violence, war, rape, and pillaging <laughs> since the beginning, since George Washington first murdered the Frenchman coming forward with the white flag of peace, mm -hmm. since our great hero George Washington first murdered the peace bringer, that is what we live on and with here. So study the truth, do the best you can to align with that because it knows no special country. Never no does. Special people. No, it does it not pick. No one. Yep, does not pick, does not choose. It gives to everyone equally, right? And to close this up, we have we have one more left, and this one can be relatively brief here because this isn't terribly difficult. Sure, that's right. It's fine. I've, I've, I've actually, frankly, enjoyed this episode a lot here. It talks about Meyer's use of hoaxes. And so Meyer has been caught using hoaxes in the past to support his claim, including photographs and videos that have been shown to be fraudulent. So something very clear here. If you go to look up the material in the case, there are only ever visual photographs of the extraterrestrials from the doll universe. And there's reasoning for this, Okay. The first one is that if somebody has a photo of someone or knows what their face looks like exactly, the human consciousness has the ability to emit impulses that can be negative or dangerous towards those beings. Now, there's a limitation to that level of telepathy for its travel of three light seconds and how far that it can actually move within our relative physical universe called the DERN, D-E-R-N, which essentially stands for the creation unfolding itself. But those thoughts, those impulses, cannot go beyond that outer barrier and touch into the doll universe. So the only real photographs of extraterrestrials are the one of really Asket. And this is one that has been absolutely destroyed by the skeptics out there over and over, saying that this is false. Look at who it is resemblance of. And, you know, it's quite remarkable that, you know, Meyer even has this stuff. But again, ask it comes from the doll universe, not the Dern one. And if you want to know what the extraterrestrials of our Dern universe look like, there are uh, drawn pictures of it because they are not of exactness and can't receive the same uh, telepathic impulses. Now, for this photo, 
The comparison has always been, so let me bring the photo up here. For you, those of you that are looking, right, on the, the, corner, uh, the bluish part of the photo on the left-hand side are the pictures of Asket from Tim Mars in the Doll Universe. And on the right is from a very specific, well-known celebrity here on planet Earth. And I wrote her name down somewhere because she was out of my time. Michelle she, de la France. Thank you very much. Michelle. Can you dive into this for a second and expound upon what sure. we're talking about here? Sure. Actually, I also have a page up on my old website where this has gone into it in a little more depth to I'll, I'll make available to you all, all the links we've spoken about if you want. Um, it was shown, and th this is very interesting, that this photo turned out to be a manipulation, a composite over Asket, the photo of or the photos of the two dancers on the Dean Martin show had been somehow at least partially superimposed. And this can be determined because one of the, you can actually see the collar of a man's dress shirt and partial outline of what may well be Dean Martin's. You have to look, but it's there. People who've gone into this pointed out a lot of things, including the uh, fact that Meyer didn't have the technology to do this stuff. He would have just at the basis, he would have needed to have a camera or a video camera set up in front of a color television and knowing precisely when he could get a shot mm -hmm. that would look mm -hmm. like the photographs that he took in the great spacer of Asket and Nera. The photograph, had he taken it off the screen, would have had to have the cathode ray tube lines. Right. It doesn't. Then Meyer, and he would have probably captured part of the TV screen in the photo. All of these, there's a lot of very discreet details. Meyer, it's not even, wasn't proved that Meyer even had a color TV during the year this was broadcast. Mm -hmm. None of these things. There's all sorts of facts. Here, additionally, in the contact, which we have online, Meyer is a, uh, talking to Patara, who says, uh, because Billy's talking about taking photographs of Asket and Nira. And, and Pata says it's very interesting because we found that on Earth there are two double gangers, gangers, uh, two doubles for Asket and Nira. And Billy said, oh, that's very interesting. Why don't we go and see? And, and Pata says, for certain reasons, we're not going to do that. And this was very strange to Billy. But what it was, in my estimation, he was warning at this point, because in the same contact, Billy is told that photographs of his from his space trip have been manipulated and are no longer trustworthy. They can't be called evidence in the case. Now, some people mm -hmm. have attacked because Billy left those photos in binders and things. First of all, people don't necessarily understand that Billy had hundreds over a thousand 1400 photos and he's throwing them in shoe boxes and binders and everything and they're being stolen right and left and the photos weren't of that much importance to him personally because yeah. he's been on these things since a child but he understood this is evidence so he didn't catch when full, uh, falsified photos would come in because the photos any photo he took and some you know in some of these cameras they uh, in back in the day, they are in sealed things. You just pop the sealed thing in yep. and you take it to the uh, photo store for them to develop. They don't even develop the, the bare photo in the village there, sent it out to Kodak. In between bear having it and Kodak, it the CIA, who was observing this from as early on as they could, would intercept certain stuff, steal stuff out, right? Mm -hmm. Meyer has lost dozens, apparently, of films of the UFOs. This is depressing. But anyhow, they got people who could manipulate, and they manipulated those Asket Nero photos. A good, diligent person going close in on those photos will see these are composites. Well, did Billy do them? So they asked the, the people who owned Bear Photo, the investigators, said, um, what equipment did Billy Meyer buy from you? They said, well, he bought cameras and, and film and a tripod. I think, you know. They said, well, what about chemicals or an enlarger? He said, no, he never bought any equipment from us. So Meyer never, I mean, if people understood what Billy was doing literally single-handedly in those days, yeah. 
rebuilding this farmhouse, working as a night watchman, going on contacts, trans- transcribing, dodging assassins, raising a fa- you know, people today, most people today, they can barely handle the three tasks that are, bef- you know, in front of them that they have to take care of. So it's just, it's an impossibility and it was in- established and we have the photos. And here's another piece. Michelle de la Fave and her friend of hers contacted me, I don't know, four years ago, whatever it was, and maybe five, and said, hey, Michelle is the, de- you know, Michelle de la Fave, she's the double of Askip. And I said, yeah. And she said, well, she's my friend and she wants to meet Billy because she knows Billy's not a hoaxer. Cool. And I said, well, cool. th- you know, let me see what I can do because Billy doesn't often take meetings, but I'll bet you, let's see what happens. Contacted Billy, put them in touch with each other. They went to Switzerland. And, sat, and last time I've been with Billy, he's got the photograph of, uh, what's her name? Uh, Michelle de la Fave from being there. And he says, every time I look at that, she just reminds me of Asket. You know, it's the same thing. He says, Asket's younger looking, but of course she's older. You know, it's yeah. just a kind of a cute thing. But Billy's never faked a damn thing. If you have one genuine UFO photo and you have hundreds more have come out, um, if those are hoaxes, why? And you're going to figure it out pretty quickly. And there are no hoaxes. None. None at all. And so with that, Michael, I I truly appreciate all the time today. We spent an ample Mm -hmm. amount of minutes here making sure that we could talk about these claims that others are making against Billy and bringing some of the evidence and record to light uh, to say, hey, this is in fact what's really going on. Because when you put more details to it, you start to see how those claims start to fall apart. And so with that, before we close out, is there anything you would like to finish up with or close on? Uh, No, just to say we continue to do this work and everybody's welcome to check it out. Plenty and plenty of free information at theyflyblog.com. At the earlier uh, website, theyfly.com, I do try to answer all emails. I can be reached through either of those sites. It takes me time to do it. I'm involved in uh, some other film projects that are coming now and book writing and what have you. So there we have it. I would just, I would say one last thing, and that is, please heed the warnings. These prophecies here that aren't here to create a belief system, they were, they've been given literally over thousands of years for us today that we may survive ourselves and further the real beneficiaries of this material are not most of the people living today they are the survivors of these failed times many people living there a certain number will be among them but it's not the masses that are capable capable of grasping this in time. Instead, we keep on following the false leaders and the people that will lead the world further into destruction. So let's, for all of us, for however long we live, let's be among the survivors and be cheerful. Thank you very much, Michael. I appreciate you coming on to Higher Density Living today, joining our community one and sharing this information about the Meyer case and the creational energy spirit teaching. Thank you very much, my friend. (laughs) 